Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates of some top bodybuilders, and as you can see we are starting with a former Mr. Olympia, Brandon Curry, he won the Mr. Olympia back in 2019, and ever since he didn't really made a lot of progress, he pretty much stayed the same, but I think this year he looks like he is getting worse. I think it's pretty safe to say at this point that Brandon Curry is done. Now, if you look at his upper body, you would say that this upper body can win the Mr. Olympia. It's arguably the best upper body out there. I mean, it could definitely challenge everyone's upper body. I mean, it's very, very complete. Like, those arms are insane. That chest is super full. Shoulders are big and round and, and wide. Back is also really, really good. The midsection is perfect, flawless, pretty much. The waist is small. Everything is in perfect proportion and everything is super, super developed. So, like, if his legs matched his upper body, this guy would be Mr. Olympia even today. He would probably be like 10 times Mr. Olympia, but that's a big if. That's a big if. That's if he has an entire muscle group that's actually half of his body. Now, you don't really see how bad his legs are in all the poses. He can hide his legs and actually make them look pretty good in the side poses. From the back, also you can see, but it's not that bad. Although from the front, yeah, very, very bad. And the reason why I'm saying he's done is because right now, this year, actually in this physique update that he posted, at seven and a half weeks out of 2023 Mr. Olympia, his legs look worse than never, especially that right leg. So like I said, since he won the Mr. Olympia, his upper body pretty much stayed the same, right? It stayed big and full and it didn't really progress much, it can't really get much better than this. But I feel like his lower body has been getting worse so slowly that you wouldn't even notice it. But if you take a look at 2019, it seems like his legs were a bit bigger and fuller. However, now, in this physique update, one of his legs, especially the right one here, you can see it's completely flat. Now, there is no lateralis pretty much left. Uh, his adductors are fine, they were always fine, but his lateralis and like everything else on his quads, just gone. So, based on the way he's looking right now, I don't have this guy in my top six. No, unfortunately, not even top six. At the 2022 Mr. Olympia, Brandon Curry placed fourth, which is a great success, it's a great result. He beat Big Ramy, he beat Samson Daura, he beat Andrew Jacked. He was only beaten by three guys. And why does everybody have him outside of that top four this year? Well, I think last year, I think he was like really underappreciated because he was blasting full. He was super full, super big, but just the details weren't there because of that crazy fullness. So I'm expecting him to look at the legs here. So that, that's why he was fourth. That's why he didn't win the Mr. Olympia, because of the legs. But I think this year he's probably gonna try and come in a little bit more conditioned. Because last year he was off, really. With conditioning he was off. But if he does that, if he comes in more conditioned, he's gonna lose even more fullness in the legs. And look at his legs. So small for his upper body. This, this doesn't look very smooth. I never noticed this. Anyways, considering that he is still in Kuwait, that he is coached by those guys, they are probably going to go for like craziest fullness possible. So he's probably not going to be conditioned again this year. And he will be as full as possible, but his legs look smaller now. So yeah, I think he's going to go down a couple of spots. Let's check out this posing video once again. So like same lighting, same spot, like every year. Uh, pretty much the same physique uh, other than that one leg, basically both his legs uh, losing a little bit more of that size every year. I heard that this year he went to Kuwait earlier than he did all these years so far. So that probably means he's like more focused than before, he's probably gonna try harder. But the guys that I think are gonna beat him this year, aside from Nick, Hari and Derek, uh, Samson and Andrew Jack have been training the entire year. They don't need to go to Kuwait to focus on training, they are always training super hard. And they are, you know, up and coming, they have been making a lot of progress from show to show, so I think this year they will surpass him. So that's five guys that I think are gonna beat him, so yeah, Brandon Curry will probably make the top six, but not higher than that. 
which is a loss for a guy of his stature, for a Mr. Olympia, who is still looking very fresh, very, very good. Yeah, legs are a bit of an issue, but like he's overall really good. He's very, very good. And if he places sixth in this lineup, that, may, that just talks about how good the lineup is today. If this guy is out of top five, you know, that means that the lineup is insane. And uh, it is. It absolutely is. And once again, in my opinion, I have Brandon Curry out of that top five, possibly best case scenario sixth. What do you guys think? And here is one of those guys who didn't beat him last year, but will this year, and that's Samson Dauda. I mean, Samson is going to look completely different from what he looked like last year, the Mr. Olympia. He already looked completely different at the Arnold Classic, and now he will have more time to progress. Another rebound. So, yeah, I'm expecting this guy to look insane. Now, I like this post very much because of what he wrote right there. He said that he always had a vision of what his physique is going to look like, and he describes his physique as a bigger version of classic, and that's exactly what it is. If you look at this physique right here, why would you say that this is less classic than, let's say, Terence Ruffin in a side chest? Or whoever, Ramon Dino, Urs Kalicinski, even Chris Bumstead. Like, I don't see why this physique is not more classic, especially in the side chest, than any of the top classic guys. And even in the other poses as well, like he is a very, very classic looking bodybuilder, but also he is the biggest mass monster in the world right now. So when it comes to Samson, like I know he's going to be big and full. At this point, he grew enough muscle that I think he can sacrifice some fullness and can afford to come in conditioned. And I'm not talking any more conditioned than, let's say, Arnold Classic version that we saw a couple of months ago, basically. So, last year, the Mr. Olympia, he wasn't very conditioned, and that's why he plays sixth. If he had, like, the same size and fullness and better conditioning, he would have already probably placed higher than Big Ramy for sure, and probably even Brandon Curry. That didn't happen, though. Maybe if they went for conditioning, he would be too small and wouldn't place so high. But then, at the Arnold Classic, he was as big as he was at the, at the Mr. Olympia, but he was just more conditioned, and he looked even bigger and even freakier. So this year, the Mr. Olympia, if he comes in, you know, let's say conditioned as he was at the Arnold, maybe like 2% better, and with the same fullness, maybe like a little bit more fullness, then he has a really good chance of winning the Mr. Olympia title. So at this point, I probably have either him or Derek Lansford winning the Mr. Olympia. So those are my top two guys. What do you guys think? Speaking of classic, we got another physique update of our reigning classic physique Mr. Olympia champion Chris Bumstead hitting a front double bicep with this crazy vacuum. Looking crazy, man. Looking sick. Looking as aesthetic as they come. Now, last year the Mr. Olympia, he had a bicep tear. He spoke about it after that Mr. Olympia. I think he tore it doing some barbell rows or something like that, like a, like a back exercise, I believe. You could definitely notice that his left bicep was a bit swollen on that stage. He said that it wasn't like a big tear. I think it was like a really minor tear. But now, looking at his biceps, I think his left one looks bigger. It looks peakier, it looks longer, it looks thicker. Right one, though, looks shorter and less peaky. It could be the angle, it could be the shadow, because this four is not like a proper physique update, but I don't know, I don't think so. I think I can definitely see that that left bicep looks better now. So on the Mr. Olympia stage, it was definitely visible, but that left bicep didn't really seem super peaky, you know? It seemed bigger, especially the lower head. I mean, it's a lower head when you look at it from this angle, it's the inner head. The outer head, or from this angle, the upper head, wasn't really that, that much swollen or enhanced. Now, I'm saying enhanced because there were some rumors that it wasn't actually a bicep tear, that instead it was, you know, sintel or something like that. That he tried to enhance his biceps to make them look fuller and rounder, and that he had an injection going wrong. I mean, is that really what happened? I doubt it. I don't think he would do something like that. But who knows? I mean, this guy is the best in the world. I mean, you don't become the best in the world by accident. You are willing to do whatever it takes. Sure, genetics play a big role, but like out of like a million people trying to become the classic physique Mr. Olympia champion, the champion, I'm sure, is doing whatever is necessary. 
So this was him in 2019. Compare his biceps and his arms to Brion Ainsley's. Like, big difference. Big, big difference. And, like, he had a really short heads of the bicep and the tricep as well. He had more details, though, right? Like, his biceps, his arms were, like, all in details. You know, carved up, shredded. Small, you know, the, the, the heads were really short. But they were really dry. Now, it's not really the case anymore. And it's not just the left bicep that got injured, allegedly, it's also the right one. Like, his arms are just definitely much rounder, much fuller, and, like, nothing else really progressed that much, as much as arms. So, I don't know, I mean, <laughs> I'm not necessarily accusing him of using oil, but there is something weird going on, I don't know. All I'm saying is that his arms look so much better now that it's kind of mind-boggling. Look, whatever he did to them, whether it was crazy FST7 training, or he tore both biceps and both triceps and, I don't know, reattached them differently and now they look freakier, or he did use oil, in fact, or something like that, I don't care what it is, his arms do look better now, so whatever he did, he did it right. Maybe his arms are not looking as, as dry, as detailed as they did back when they were smaller, but with more size... His silhouette is better, he's more complete, he looks fuller, he looks definitely improved. So I'm not knocking on Chris, I do prefer his 2022 Mr. Olympia version, that's my favorite one for sure, and I think he's bringing something even crazier this year. Once again, look at those biceps, like, do these arms look small to you now? Not even close, man, not even close. And this wee taper, <sighs> crazy, crazy stuff right here. The next pro show we got is Legion Sports Fest, and John Jewett is one of the competitors that's doing this show. Now, he's of course a 212 Mr. Olympia competitor, he was I believe third at the Mr. Olympia, his best placement. He already won a show, which show was it? I don't even remember, it was a show that only has a 212 as the, as the highest bodybuilding class. Uh, he won that show, he qualified for the Mr. Olympia, but he wants to do an open show as well. And as you can see, based on the caption right here, the goal is to win Legion. So he's gonna face a couple of heavy hitters, like uh, Charles Griffin, like potentially Guduito, a couple of other really good guys as well. We're gonna talk about that show more in the next video. But as for now, we got a physique update of John Jewett. And the question is, can he win Legion? Can he win the open class? I think it is very possible, because John Jewett is really known for his consistency, he always comes in shredded, and now there is no weight cap, that he can actually come in bigger and fuller than ever before, and based on what he looks like right now, the conditioning and everything, he is flat here probably, but once he carves up and can actually do a peak quick without making the weight for 212, I'm expecting him to bring something insane to that stage, so it's gonna be very interesting. Anyways, guys, whatever your thoughts are about whichever topic of this video, tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. For more stuff like this, subscribe to the channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.